We've come together at UUFC in part because we are people who choose to bless the world. I've come to believe that UUFC is one of the hubs of action in this area. Quietly and without much fanfare, we work to help build a better world. Yet one needs a foundation of care and support to have the strength to bless the world. At times, I imagine coming here on Sunday morning is like taking a rest and getting our backpacks loaded up for the coming week. None of us can save the world alone. Together, that is another possibility waiting for us. And we need to have the emotional and spiritual resources to take on the world. We need to be nurtured. We need this community. It is our spiritual and religious home. As you know, the theme of our stewardship campaign speaks to how we create a bountiful harvest of hearts, minds, and resources to nurture us as we live in the larger world. And we need regularly to look at how we are stewards of our community and how we wish to budget our resources, not to mention the resources that we have. So usually a stewardship campaign in UU congregations begins with what is affectionately called the Sermon on the Amount. <laughs> Though today I am going to let the committee and the board talk about the amount. I want us to take a little time to focus on the roots this fellowship sent deep down in the Clemson soil and to look at some of the harvests we have already enjoyed, the harvests that have given strength and nurture for almost 60 years. We need to remember that uh, two years from now we're going to have a big celebration. I cannot imagine the courage and perseverance it took both to begin and then to sustain the seed of liberal religion that was dropped into this soil all those years ago. We're talking pre-civil rights movement. Who knew that all these years later the fellowship would become such a wonderful place for us, for us to enjoy? Our founders and those who came in the early years tilled the soil and laid out the original vision for who we have become. Could they have imagined that we would be sitting here in this sanctuary this morning? The concept of growing a fruitful congregation elicits images of planting and harvest, which affirm the kind of long-term work, persistence, and vision it takes to build a religious community. I grew up on a working farm, and I am deeply aware of the ongoing commitment necessary to work the land. You know the work's going to be there year after year. There are some bountiful years and there are some years that may be lean, but the commitment must remain. Too often those of us who come to a congregation years after its founding forget the foundational work it took to prepare the fields to prepare the soil, to keep the varmints out, to create a healthy congregation. So today I want us to honor not only where we are going, but also where we began. The tillers of the soil, the gardeners of the vision, and those who literally laid the foundation, not to mention the parking lot grids. 
We had a bit of fun a few minutes ago with images of the kinds of people we've gathered uh, to create this fellowship. We have our hard workers, our dreamers, our caregivers, and our characters. And I hope that we will always be able to laugh together and appreciate the special and unique garden we've created here. This week, Carol Ward was nice enough to find pictures that show some of the work that took place over the years and some of the faces of our early members. I enjoy poring over pictures, seeing how the building was built, and trying to figure out which kids belong to what family. Some of those pictures are going to be around the social hall this morning, so try to find yourself or your children. I noticed there was a lot more black hair back then. <laughs> Um, and many of the children that are in there have children of their own now, not to mention uh, Sandra's grand, brand new grandbaby, who we didn't mention in um, Celebrations and Concerns. Her daughter had baby Henry, who was born yesterday. I looked into the faces of people who have passed on who I will never have the opportunity to meet but who remain beloved by this community. They committed themselves to the future of the fellowship, knowing they would not see where it ended up. So let us honor the past as we prepare to go into the future. What must it have been like in 1954 to gather a few folks to envision a UU presence in Clemson? Is there anyone here who was there in the early years? Like mid-50s, late-50s? Your picture is up in the fellowship hall from like 30 or 40. Everybody look for Eleanor. <laughs> Uh, yeah, at Bernice and Albert, yes. Um, I understand that in those early years there were some tensions, but the vision never lost, never left the hearts and minds of those who stayed. After meeting at the university for a while, land was purchased. Anybody here during that period? When, ah, when the land was purchased. Yes, you had a lot darker hair in that picture back there. <laughs> There's a big article in the paper in 1979 when the land was purchased. The back of the building was built, and I can hardly imagine all of us squashing into the social hall on Sunday morning, though I'm giving you fair warning when the clear story in the roof are repaired in a few weeks or months. We're going to be squashing in there for two or three weeks again. So who was here when the first building was built? Yeah, yeah. And what about the addition of the sanctuary and fixing up the founder's house? How many of you were here then? That's great. What about the people who put in the eco-friendly parking lot? How many people helped with that? was really hard work. I'm astounded. We can't say thank you enough. We can't say thank you often enough. What a legacy you have given both us and future generations. And we know that one day we too will release the future of this fellowship to the next generation of leaders and visionaries. We are planting seeds, not only for this community, but also for the larger world. During those years, this congregation committed to becoming a welcoming congregation. We committed to becoming a green sanctuary congregation. And that is building the foundation for our children and our grandchildren. 
Many of the children in the pictures that are up in the fellowship hall are now adults who have taken the lessons they learned here into the world. So let us honor as we prepare to look toward the future. I can't imagine what it must have been like in 1954. And now it's time for us to envision the next stage at UUFC. We're building on that vision and that legacy. We don't know what potential lies dormant in the seeds we're planting this year. But I do know that there's a sense of excitement around here about the possibilities. There's excitement about new programs and new staff. Sometimes I feel it feels like the image I have of a seed just getting ready to break out of its skin with the leaf coming up that's our vision and the root going down deep into the earth that is our heritage and our legacy. So we need to ask ourselves, what legacy do we want to build today that our children and grandchildren will harvest in years to come? What vision for our fellowship can we offer them that will help them bless the world? Ray Bradbury in his novel Fahrenheit 451 wrote, everyone must leave something behind when he dies, my grandfather said. A child or a book or a painting or a house or a wall built, or a pair of shoes made, or a garden planted. Something your hand touched some way so your soul has somewhere to go when you die. And will people look at that tree or that flower you planted? You're there. It doesn't matter what you do, he said, so long as you change something from the way it was before you touched it into something that's like you after you take your hands away. The difference between the man who just cuts the lawn and a real gardener is in the touching, he said. The lawn cutter might just as well have not been there at all. The gardener will be there for a lifetime. We are not people who simply clip the edges of life. When I look around this room, I see people who work to make a difference. Many of you who have been here for many years, even decades, have experienced the lean times and the times of great excitement. Every step of the way, you have chosen to keep nurturing the garden that is this fellowship. Did you imagine we would be here today? The question for us now is, what can we imagine together as we plant for the future? Last year as a congregation, you worked hard to meet the goals of the stewardship camp campaign, and I'm really happy that you did, <laughs> or I wouldn't be here now. Now all the staff positions have been filled with people who are committed and care deeply about this congregation. This year we have new goals, and the stewardship committee and the board are asking you to make a commitment to meet the budget needs for staff, program, and paying off some of our debt. It's a budget that's going to take a larger financial commitment on our part. In a real sense, though, this is the first day of the rest of the life of the fellowship. Building on our solid foundation, we have the possibility of being part of the Clemson community in a more substantial way than we ever could have been all those years ago. Even though when we look out on the world, it may seem that we are small, without much impact, our work together is both transformational for ourselves 
and for others. Some of us made commitments all those years ago so that the desegregation at Clemson University would take place peacefully 50 years ago this year. This congregation was already eight years old then, and people like Bernice and Albert were hard at work. When this congregation was first planted on this spot, we were the only liberal religious congregation in the Clemson area. It took strength of purpose as well as courage to choose to bless the world and to begin a UU congregation here. Today, we are fortunate that there are several congregations, such as Peace Church, the mosque, the Buddhist Sanghas who meet here, they all offer religious diversity within this area. Together, we're making a larger impact to bless the world. I doubt that our founding members could have imagined that there would be so much cooperative interfaith work on social justice projects with people from many faith traditions participating. And there were bumps along the way, sometimes big bumps. At each point, members could have said, that's enough. It's too difficult. But you didn't, and we won't. Our eyes are focused on the future, not just the past and the present. We are planting food for our sustenance and those who will come after us. The Reverend Peter Rabel wrote, we build on foundations we did not lay. We warm ourselves by fires we did not light. We sit in the shade of trees we did not plant. We drink from wells we did not dig. We profit from persons we didn't know. We are ever bound in community. We have held the faith, and through the trying times, we have not given in to fear or despair. We've been changed and transformed by our shared vision. Writer and theologian Karen Armstrong puts it this way, Religion is not about accepting 20 impossible propositions before breakfast, but about doing things that change you. It's a moral aesthetic, an ethical alchemy. If you behave in a certain way, you will be transformed. Sometimes it's hard to trust that transformation is possible. Some of the things that I heard when I candidated were about the challenges this congregation has experienced. Some of those created, logically, anxiety for folks who thought that if I knew everything about the community, I wouldn't want to come to Clemson. And I was thinking, what's not to love about this group of committed, kind, and generous people? An example of anxiety was the concern that it would not be possible for us to find religious education teachers. So how many of you were here a few weeks ago when we had the teacher dedication? How did it feel to have all of those teachers standing up there? We need to tap in to our potential. I encourage us not to be caught by what we think is not possible, but to build a vision that more might be possible than we can imagine. So what did it feel like a weekend before last when you use and folks from Peace Church built a Habitat house? What does it feel like to have one of our own in seminary knowing that she will help shape the future of Unitarian Universalism? 
we are only beginning to explore what's possible for this fellowship. It's time to get to work in visioning. I've been thinking a lot about our potential as I begin planning my official installation in March. And thank you, Elaine, for finding a, a wonderful Holly Near song that she sings is going to perform, and we're going to help them a little bit. The lyrics speak to the hope and possibility that's waiting for us. The chorus of the song goes, I'm willing and I'm open, for to be hopeless would seem so strange. It dishonors those who have gone before us. So lift me up to the light of change. It takes us all, our ideas, our energy, our time, and our financial resources to lift us up to the light of change, to the light of possibility. We have a bright future. And yes, we need your generous gifts so that we can manifest that future. As a pledging member of this congregation, not just a staff member, I too have a stake in creating that future. I pledge because I've already fallen in love with this community. I believe in you and what we can create together. I want to build on the solid foundation that's here. And I'm excited. How many of you are excited about what we can accomplish and what we can build together? And we won't be able to accomplish everything this year, but we're on the road. We are working together, we are growing as individuals, we are living our values as we plant seeds for the next harvest. What an exciting time to be together, building and growing. <laughs>